Hello everybody and welcome back to the second shelf and to another Friday Reads. Yes, I will stick with it. Um, I liked it the last time. It was not uh, a week ago, but two weeks ago, because last Friday was the tops and flops, the March tops and flops. But um, the first uh, Friday reads that I did two weeks ago, I, I enjoyed it, and you seem to enjoy it too. So we will we will stick to, we will stick with it for the time being. Um, so first, the books that I finished, and in the description I said last week, but because I didn't do a Friday reads last week, it's a little more <laughs> than just last week. And the first one is this, um, an essay collection by Koa Back, White Feminism, uh, From the Suffragettes to Influencers and Who They Leave Behind, uh, published earlier this year in January. And I already talked about this book in the very first Friday Reads because I was just about to finish. Uh, this was a buddy read with Heidi from My Reading Life. Um, and I had a look, but I don't think um, Heidi put up a review yet, so maybe that will come. Um, so I, otherwise I would have linked the review. Anyway, <laughs> um, so Cora Beck um, is a, a young black uh, American journalist. She worked for Jezebel, but she also worked uh, for the more mainstream, uh, quote-unquote, women's magazine. She wrote for Mary Claire and Vogue and such. Um, and in this um, book, she tries to examine um, the failures of white feminism, like it said in the subtitle, you know, the, the, the groups that were left behind. And I thought that was really interesting because it's a big issue, for, certainly for a white feminist like, you know, me, um, what we did wrong and how we could improve and, you know, be more inclusive. So I was really looking forward to this one. Um, and it was not a bad book, um, but she examined through history various um, uh, issues, uh, for instance, um, you know, uh, feminism in, in Muslim communities and how that didn't, uh, wasn't included in the mainstream feminists or lesbians, uh, but also some grassroots um, uh, organizations that we can learn from. Uh, like the the, the butchers uh, strike organized by Jewish housewives um, way back when. Um, and so each of the chapters was interesting to read and she has an uh, Koa Beck has an easy pen so it's it's a it's a pleasure to read. but it didn't really come together in a way and that was mainly because her uh, premise, uh, to explore the failures of white feminism, she didn't actually do that uh, because uh, sometimes it was not a matter of, you know, white feminists excluding other uh, groups, uh, 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 other races, but it was a matter of class. Like it was about middle class feminism, excluding working class women. Or it was about... Um, mainstream Western feminism, excluding Muslim women, or um, mainstream straight feminists, excluding lesbians, or uh, non-binary people, or transgender women. So it, it was not a coherent... Um, it, 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 it was not coherent, the definition of what she took as her um, focus point of exclusion, and that made it just not that good of a book. It was still goodish, kind of, because each chapter, like I said, was interesting, but she didn't do what the book said. And that, that was a bit of a, a letdown, I thought. But still, if you just disregard everything here and disregard the title, <laughs> um, and when she talks about white feminism in each chapter, you have to think, oh, this time she means white, middle-class, straight feminists. Then you might still enjoy it. The second book um, that I finished is also a book that I mentioned uh, in the last and first Friday read. Which is a strange combination. 
the last anyway uh, and that is a short story collection um, Asako Serizawa Inheritors published last year 2020 um, this was a buddy read with Sean and Sean did actually put up a review already and I will link that review uh, in the description box the spoiler alert so Sean didn't like the book very much um, I did like it better than Sean did but it was not 100% a success for me either, I have to say. Um, uh, Seri Sava is an, a Japanese um, writer, but she wrote in English, so that's why I didn't, um, I, I didn't forget to mention the translator. It, it was written in English. And what she tries to explore is um, she takes one family. There's an extensive family tree at the beginning of the book uh, from the early 20th century until in the future even, uh, so 2040, I think, or 2060, uh, the book ends. Um, and then uh, each a short story looks at a particular person in within that family tree. Some, per, some people have uh, two stories, some are without a story, and it's not chronological. So you don't go from the beginning of the 20th century in chronological order until uh, the 21st century. And the main theme is how um, World War II and uh, the, Jap uh, the Japanese involvement in World War II and everything that goes with that, you know, the, the relationship between Jap uh, Japan and Korea, um, how that affected this particular family in each generation. I thought that was a really, really good premise. Um, the point is that a lot of the stories are not that strong as a story, as an individual story. A lot of them are very much almost non-fiction-like um, essays about a certain, you know, political topic that she wanted to explore within the framework that I just uh, told you about. So if you're looking for a collection... I mean, in, in, I think there is no short story collection where every single short story in that collection is brilliant. You will always have some that are maybe not as good. But if you're looking for a, a short story collection where you can actually read each short story uh, individually and not make connections with the rest, this is certainly not a collection for you. I think the the strength of this collection is that it's almost like a novel told in short stories because the the whole is certainly more than the sum of its parts but again the stories individually are often just not that strong but i liked really enjoy i i, I like the premise and i thought it gave me in the end a pretty good picture of um, an important issue, an important topic within a Japanese history. So uh, look at, at Sean's uh, review and then make up your mind whether this uh, collection would be something uh, that you might enjoy. The third book I, I finished, and I did actually finish that last week, um, is Laila Lamani's latest book, The Other Americans. Yeah, Laila, Lalami. <laughs> um, the Other Americans which was published in 2019. I've been meaning to read this book uh, for quite a while. I acquired it also quite a while ago um, because I really enjoyed uh, Lalami's um, uh, The Moors account, a historical fiction um, uh, set in, in, you know, Colombian kind of uh, the US. So th I, I thought that was really good. So I was looking forward to this one, but it... Again, I have to say it was a bit of a hmm, meh book. Not bad, and uh, Lalami can write, and she can tell a story, but no. Um, the, the premise of the story is um, a an, an, an Moroccan immigrant is killed by a hit-and-run car accident. And from that point onwards, um, we see the, the 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 perpetrator is not found at least you know when when the, the when the book opens and then we have various perspectives we have uh, the perspective of the moroccan immigrant 
up until his death, what happened that night. We have his daughter, we have his wife, we have uh, the detective that is charged with investigating. Uh, we have various other people in the neighborhood in quite short chapters giving their point of view of, uh, of events uh, either in the past or leading up to the accident or after the accident. Um, and again, like with the with the core back book, um, that's what, what was an interesting premise. But I didn't feel uh, connected to the story. I thought uh, in the end it was quite a cliche uh, investigation of race, uh, family um, uh, relations. You know the the. the racism that the racist people were your, your typical racist people very cardboardy and very um you know two-dimensional um and the the sort of twist uh in in the plot was something that you saw coming from a mile away um yeah so it it's not bad it was entertaining which is weird given the topic but it was in my opinion for me it was just not very good unfortunately and the last book I want to talk to you about that I finish is another non-fiction book and that is Natalie Haynes Pandora's Jar which was published last October October 2020. Uh, Natalie Haynes is um, a, a British writer um, she you might have read some of her historical fiction. She focuses on Greek um, mythology or Greek histories. So she wrote uh, a book, a, a Thousand Ships, about the female perspective of the the Trojan War. Um, and this one is a non-fiction. Um, I think it says here, women in the Greek myth, a, a non-fiction exploration of the same topic. Um, I really, really like this book. It it it's um, it has I think eight or nine. Yeah. So you she talks about Pandora. Um, you know uh, she talks about uh, Helen of Troy, of Medusa, the Amazons, Penelope, Medea. So most of them, the names or the 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 mist the the mystical figures mythological figures i think as you have to say uh, you are probably familiar with and then she explores how we uh, the image that they have in our you know mainstream uh, opinion and whether that's true and whether you need nuance uh, she explores the the old greek um uh, plays where these women uh, entered the the stage for the first time I thought it it was it was entertaining it was brilliant it was really engaging but I have to say if you are not interested in Greek mythology if you're not interested in Greek playwrights this is not a book for you because it's really going in depth into mythology into those you know plays by Euripides or um, other Greek playwrights and if that does not interest you you will be bored but if you are interested like I was interested then this book is an absolute delight and I can certainly recommend it and then uh, there are two books that I've started uh, recently last couple of days and the first one is Rebecca Giggs Fathoms the World in the Whale, uh, which was published uh, last year, 2020. And this is my first read for Aussie April. If you're not familiar, Aussie April just means in April we try to read more books, fiction or non-fiction, by Australian authors. Um, so Rebecca Giggs is a journalist, an Australian journalist uh, from Perth, um, and this is her first book, but she has published um, a short non-fiction or you know non-fiction for, for magazines uh, before. Um, she, this book is also I should mention um, shortlisted now for the Stella Prize. Uh, the Stella Prize is uh, the most important prize in Australia for books by female authors. So non-fiction and fiction, poetry, uh, they are all in one category um, and uh, this one is now shortlisted. Uh, I will leave a link to the Stella Prize down below so you can check out dates and the other books that have been longlisted and shortlisted this year. I'm, I will be reading this as a buddy read with Heidi from My Reading Life, whom I mentioned earlier. 
Um, and I just read the first, the introduction and the first couple of pages of the first chapter. We have a check-in tomorrow. So, um, but the, the premise, if you will, of the book is that, um, Rebecca Giggs encountered, um, a stranded hunchback in Australia, um, uh, who died on the beach. And that incident, um, started her investigation into whales, um, the relationship between whales and humans, but also what is the life of a whale like and what does it say about the condition of the waters, but also pollution, um, not only in the water, but in the air. Um, and that sounded fascinating. I think whales are absolutely fascinating animals um, and we know very little about them. So when I saw this book um, on the Stella Prize long list, um, I thought I want to read it. So I will keep you posted uh, with the next Friday reads um, uh, and I hope that it will be as good um, as it sounds. And the last book uh, that I want to talk to you about is the second book that I started um, just yesterday and that is Phyllis Chesler. Um, an Incorrect Feminist, um, published in 2018. Um, Phyllis Chesler is one of the, the w very well-known, I would say, uh, feminists of the second wave. She was born in 1940, an American scholar. She, is, uh, uh, she studies psychology. And her most famous work, I think, is Women and Madness, where she explores um, uh, how women were treated as mad if when they were different, just very short. She published extensively uh, throughout um, her, her life. Um, and I read most of her books way back uh, when, but this one is a new memoir in which she talks about the, um, yeah, the, the development, how the second wave came into being in, in the US. Um, I, when I saw this, Two years ago, I meant to read it and, you know, like it happens, then I, I didn't. So finally, um, I will read it uh, this month in my ongoing project of educating myself about feminism some more. You know that if you're following my channel. Anyway, so Phyllis Chesler, an incorrect, um, politically incorrect feminist. Um, I will also leave a link to a, a documentary that was a published in the same year, 2018, that I just recently watched on Netflix about the second wave feminists like Phyllis Chesler. If you're interested um, to, uh, to watch that and if you have an, uh, Netflix, I will leave a link to the uh, Wikipedia page about this documentary down below. I thought it, it was really, really interesting and well done. And, you know, to go back uh, to, to those... 1960s, 1970s, second wave feminists. That that was, yeah, I, I liked it. But then again, I'm interested in feminism. Anyway, so this was my second Friday Reads. And don't worry, I'm not going to count <laughs> from now on each Friday Read. Like, this is my 1,578th Friday Read. No, we're not going to do that. We'll stop here with the second one with the counting. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. As always, I'm looking forward to your comments. And I'll see you all soon in the next one.